All right. Let's see. Let us see. Yo. I refuse to send my check, but I have to check my mic because a while ago I was just talking for nine minutes straight and my mic was off, but now my mic is on. Can you hear myself clearly? So what I wanted to discuss was both um, Jean, our Caribbean brother born in St. Lucia. Added to the list of victims of police murder. If if you have um, been watching This situation closely, yeah, you will know that this police officer, Geiger, whatever her name is, she claims that she believed that she was entering her apartment. She lives on the third floor, he lives on the fourth floor, with a big red mat in front of his door. So she goes to his floor, is trying her key in his door. Somehow the door ends up open. I don't know if the guy came to the door and opened the door because witness reports are saying she was saying, let me in. But she's saying the door was open, but she was trying her key and her key wasn't working. So it, that right there makes no sense. So her story isn't really adding up. Anyway, she, en she ends up entering this man's apartment, this man's home where he lives. And she shoots him and kills him. And the police reports are framing it. All about her belief that, you know, th this belief that they, they, they are in danger. I was in fear. So this is kind of what they are trying to, to, to spin this as. She believed she was in her apartment. Everything is about her belief, her belief, not about the facts. They aren't, they, I watched the, the, the Dallas police reporting on this, making a statement about this, and everything was about her beliefs. Nothing was about the facts of the, the, the situation that she invaded this person's home and invaded this person's home and murdered this person murder murdered our brother both am jean or both am jean that, that that is what took place but that is not what we will hear and what 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 do we expect from this based on the precedent set What should we expect? Either they are going to overcharge this officer or they are going to undercharge this officer. So what? It Say it's a case of murder. They charge her with manslaughter and then when it goes to the trial, They're going to say, um, not guilty based on the fact that this should have been a murder charge. It has happened before. They, it, it's a tactic that the, the prosecution uses to get police officers off the hook. If it's manslaughter, they, they, charge, they charge with first degree murder. Then a trial they say it's overcharging. So the officer gets off. And it seems like they are gearing up 
to let this officer off the hook for murdering, murdering our brother. That is what it seems like is going to happen. Now, let us accept the, the, the idea that she believed this was her apartment on the wrong floor with the big murder mat in front. Her, the key, her key is not working. Let's still be idiots and buy the argument, buy the excuse that she believed that she was in the wrong house. The culture that has been propagated by police, by the justice system, letting off killer cops. The culture that, that, that they promote, the culture that they have created, the environment that they have created that gives them the, 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 the right and tells them to shoot and kill people instead of assessing situations based on the level of um, threat. So this man had no weapons. This man did not attack her. None of this happened in this situation. Yet, she felt it necessary to take her gun out and shoot this person. Now we are accepting the story that she believed she was in the wrong house. So she entered the wrong apartment. But she thought it was in, no, she believed it was her apartment. No, you are under no threat. You don't see a weapon being brandished. No one is lunging at you. No one tried to tackle you. No one tried to reach for your weapon. Shouldn't we expect a, a, a police officer in this case to, to flip on a light switch or just do something other than drawing a weapon and shooting and killing the person immediately. Shouldn't that be the case? But it's not the case because what? It, we have been given a stamp of, of approval. Situation after situation where police murder innocent unarmed people. We have been given a stamp of, of approval to them time and time again. So, it is not okay for, okay for them to just murder innocent people, then just claim, I was in fear for my life. I believed this was that. I believed this was a threat. I believed that was a threat. St stop letting cowards become police officers. Simple as that. If, they, if everything is going to be a threat and everything they're going to be fearful for, even when they invade somebody's home, even when you invade, wrongfully invade someone's home, invade their privacy, threaten their safety, you murder them to the point where you, you, you even murder them. You invade the person also and he's, you are the one who pull a gun and shoot the person, not the person doing that to you. What I love, what I love, love about this case is the fact that the, 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 these right-wing people who are always, always on the side of killer cops, right? They have, they have no avenue. They have no venue. They have, n they, there's nothing about this guy who is, seems to be a part-time preacher they say he's a businessman so let me, let me go over it. so when you google him this is what pops up there's a little summary about both am jean or both am jean or both am jean there's so many ways to pronounce it so both am jean 
was identified as the 26-year-old businessman who was shot and killed by a female Dallas police officer who accidentally went into Jean's apartment thinking it was her own. His apartment with a big red mat and a completely different, different floor from yours. So I saw a video of this guy in church preaching. So obviously he's religious and he's um, trying to be a, a morally upstanding person. Doesn't seem to have any criminal record. He's smiling in his pictures, looking like looking like a church mouse. You know, looking like a positive individual, etc., etc. So there is no, they have no, they have nothing to, to cling on to to try to criminalize this person and blame him for, 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 for being murdered because that is what they like to do. A 16-year-old murdered by police, they'll dig up his kindergarten records and saw that he, he said something rude in kindergarten or he got suspended in middle school and say, oh, see there, he's no good. He's a no good um, individual that deserve to die at the hands of those who are supposed to protect and uphold the law. So that, that is one thing I like about this case. Like, w w what are you going to say now? What, are you, what, what is going to be your excuse for this police officer? Other than, oh, it's just another nigger dead. And once it's a nigger dead, um, we are happy with it. We don't care if he's guilty of anything or not. But it's just one less nigger on the face of the earth. But yeah, this is the culture that we, we we have created. Where a police officer can invade your home, off duty, invade your home, murder you, then claim they believed it was their home. Like I could go and steal somebody's car and claim I think it I thought it was my car officer. Judge, I, I thought it was my car. Forget that the car is 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 bright red. And my car is, is, is white. I thought it was my car. No, no I, I saw someone comment on one of the videos and the person was saying um, they took, because they took um, a blood sample from the officer. So they're saying, we're going to see if um, she, she was just over, she was overworked by the, the police department and see who is to blame. I'm like, what? So if I do a 14-hour day at work, right, and I'm super tired, they pretty much force me to do these extra hours by threatening to, to, to cut my hours short if I don't do it, right? So they're working me, or I am just in need of the money, and I am just working all these extra hours. And I'm exhausted, I'm fatigued. Does that then give me the right or excuse me in going to the wrong person's home or going to the wrong apartment on the wrong floor and harassing somebody, opening the person's door or knocking down the person's door or trying to open the person's lock and then when me and the person have an exchange, I shoot the person and kill the person because I am overworked. Being overworked is no excuse for murder. Being overworked is no excuse for murder. So I, I mean, the things people try to say, I, I yeah, that, that, that's all I can say for no. Yeah. This is, this is sad. This is sad. And I've tried, you know, long. I've it's, it's been literally months. I've like tried to avoid all of these 
negative negative stories all of these negative stories and and another thing we have to add to this argument is this this Colin Kaepernick business so you you have incidents like like these these are the reasons why that guy side fit to take a knee during the national anthem to bring attention to issues like this specific issue and fear targeting and fear treatment and fear consequences that black people face at the hands of government institutions like police forces you are going to say this man has no right to be taking a knee or he shouldn't be taking a knee when things like this things like these happen time and time again the only thing that happens is he's being proven right he's being justified every time a police murder somebody it's only more justification why mr colin kaepernick should take a knee and other public figures should take a knee in protest of this type of mistreatment and this mishandling of power. Anyway, leave your comments. Leave your comments. Thank you for watching. Blessings. Blessings.